everybody. Welcome back to the World of Cinematics. Uh, this this episode is going to be kind of fun. We got Thanksgiving weekend coming up week weekday. Yeah, yeah the, the, it's kind the of whole week. week. I, mean, I mean, if, if we, we have, have 12, 12 days of Christmas, Christmas, we can, can give, give Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving a list a week. week. That's true. Like <laughs> the five days of Thanksgiving. Thanks, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so today we get we have a fun little little show uh but first we want to talk a little bit about a little trailer for that just recently dropped oh, oh gosh, gosh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, i mean, I mean where, where to start, start? spider-man Spider um oh gosh, gosh. I, I yeah, yeah for, for those, those of you who, who somehow didn't, didn't know, know you know because, because this is in just like, like a day become one of the biggest trailers ever there's, there's a new trailer, trailer for spider-man no way, way home and uh it's, it's uh it's a lot it's three, three minutes long and it shows all manner of sorts of things. It shows villains that we hadn't, uh, well, some of us may not have known were coming back, like the Lizard from The Amazing Spider-Man, or uh, you know, Sandman from Spider-Man 3. You know, some villains that maybe weren't all that good, but were given uh, a second shot of uh, redemption, like Electro. I mean, gosh, side note. They actually did the, like the, 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 the crown thing for Electro, and it actually worked. It, it looks really cool. It, uh, I never, I never thought, thought I would see that in my life, life but I mean, props, props to them for getting a, a good design on that. <laughs> Making it look decent and stuff, like a guy wearing spandex, like yeah. the old car yeah. door. Oh, oh gosh. gosh, and he's, he's not glowing blue. blue. I don't think he's, he's going to be like, like, hey, man, I love you, Spider-Man. You, 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 you remember my birthday, and I've got pictures of you on my fridge. No, he looks like he's just going to be, you know, he's Electro. He got, he's a guy like Robin Banks. He's, he's simple, he's fun, he's not freaking creepy and weird. Season ATM says, "Oh, I can't stop myself, so might as yeah. well." Yeah, and I I gotta say that oh, oh, I'm so looking forward to Doc Ock. Yeah, he, he is probably like during the Spider um, crap director's name, it's right there. Is Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, hit the second movie of the Tobey Maguire. Like I, that's my favorite movie out of the the three. Personal for sure. Part. Uh, but him as Doc Ock, ooh, it, he does such a good job. And I love the little joke that they have in there in the trailer. Uh, in the trailer, his name? Like, yeah, when they were like, "I'm Doctor Otto Octavius," and then all of them start laughing at him. I I don't know. I wasn't as big on that. You know, the the humor in the trailer, some of it was okay, but most of it didn't really work for me. Like the idea of like you know that making fun of his name. Well. They did the same joke, but better in Spider-Man 2. In Spider-Man 2, you have J. Jonah Jameson you know, looking out the windows like, a huh, guy named Otto Octavius ends up with eight limbs. What are the odds? <laughs> oh, okay. I I got to give them a little credit. It's J.K. I mean, how can you yeah, talk? Yeah, that, that's fair. I mean, how, how, how can, can you beat him? him? You, you can't. He yeah. just can't. In yeah. fact, I mean, he did so good, he's back. Yeah. 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 Which, when I saw him in the trailer, and I love his little hair. Mm -hmm. around hair that was hilarious but uh another thing that kind of stuck out to me is that they're bringing forth the sinister sinister six yeah, yeah it's, it's uh it may not be the iteration we're familiar with but i mean let's look at the villains that we we know are confirmed in it so far we got doc ock green goblin sandman lizard and electro i think they're saving a big one for a surprise it it could be venom you know, it could be Tom Hardy's Venom. It could be, uh, you know, Vulture, because we know he's coming back at some point. We don't know if it'll be in this movie or sometime. Others. We know, you know, Scorpion was teased in the post credit scene for the first Marvel, or the first MCU Spider-Man movie. Or it could be something totally out of nowhere. Like, it could be Mephisto. It could be, uh, you know, freaking uh, the Joker, for all we know. They... Uh, I like, like I'm not out of nowhere. <laughs> like, like I'm not, not saying, saying hey, expect, expect uh, Patrick, Patrick Stewart to be playing uh, Professor X or you know Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Or, you know, like some, some things, things that could never happen. happen. I'm, I'm not saying, saying that, but I'm saying they seem to be pulling out all the stops for this one. Like, like you know, I don't know, I don't know if we want to address those rumors, rumors that are going, going around about certain castings of surprise individuals, but you know, if those are the ones that have got out, then. You know, anything, anything is potentially on the table for other, other cameos, cameos or surprise, surprise appearances. I would love a Deadpool. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, Especially if he was like, wait, no, 
I'm in a PG-13 movie. No. <laughs> that would be great. I'm surrounded yes. by children. I can't swear anymore. That's not going to happen. I almost guarantee that's not going to happen. Yes. But that would be great. There, there could, could be, be fun, fun ways, ways to do it. It, it, it could, could happen. happen. You, you never, never know. know. Or do I? <laughs> I may know. Yes, yes, you, you, you might. might. Who, who, who am I to say? I, I don't, I don't, I don't the play to trailer. understand the depths of your, your knowledge and understanding. I have my ways. Yes. yes. But uh, anyways, I'm just freaking grateful. Speaking of Thanksgiving, grateful. Yes. That we got that trailer. I was worried they weren't going to release it. Yeah. And I was working at the time, too. That's, that's right. When it released. So when, the moment I got home, I pulled up my phone. I was like, all right, I'm going to watch the trailer. Yep. 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 First thing on my feet. But, uh, Jed, hmm. what are you thankful for? Oh, oh gosh. gosh. Um, I mean, where to start? I mean, I'm, I'm thankful, thankful to have Thanksgiving next, next week, week, which is, uh, seems a little redundant, a little self congratulatory. Like, you know what I'm thankful for? Being thankful. Hey, it's a, uh, you know, be real. I, you know, life is hard, but we got a whole lot of things to be grateful for. And, you know, ideally we do this every day, all the time. But having a special time to just set aside, like, hey, look, we got a lot of good, a lot of good things in life. Let's, uh, you know, take a moment to reflect on that. It's, you know, it's it's humbling. It's it, it makes your life better, more enjoyable, richer. Mm-hmm. You know, it's odd. I I don't usually eat big feasts on Thanksgiving. I eat about really? I literally eat the same amount. Wow. We get ham. You get Thanksgiving food. I eat the normal amount. I don't stuff myself to the rim. Yeah. And then I go to bed. Yeah, there, there you go. go. <laughs> so uh, my Thanksgivings are boring. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, there, are th- there are things to be thankful for, definitely. Mm. The dinner is kind of just, I feel like it's just a tradition for everyone. Right. right nowadays. I mean, it, uh, I mean, it's, it's a small, small thing, thing, but, but uh, you, you know, know, something, something I'm, I'm thankful, thankful for. for. Movies. I mean, let's be real. It, you know, on the one hand, you can look at a movie and just say, "Yeah, it's it's just a movie." But on the other hand, I mean, these can be incredibly entertaining. They can be very emotional. They can change how you look at things. They can change who you are. It, you know, film as much as it's an entertainment, it also is art. And art has nothing, if nothing else, the power to to change, to influence, to make us feel. Yeah, and I. For me, I love storytelling and being able to see it visually captured yeah. as a story. I it it's good. Like I love it. It's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless it's like a bad movie, then it's like, oh, your storytelling was terrible. I don't right. like it. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. So that for me, that's that's why I love movies so much, is just the storytelling aspect and making it visual for everyone. Mm-hmm. And hands I mean Round of applause for the directors out there who yes, take, please. take those like books and stuff and then make them into a visual thing for the rest of us. Mm-hmm. Some of us who don't really read books. I, I yeah, listen to books but, more than I read books. but Hey, I, 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 I used to be a, a big book reader, but now I'm in the same boat as you. I've, I've always got something in and I'm listening to something. I, oh, gosh. I've been, I've been through, through so many books during the pandemic. pandemic. So many books, I'm like, like you know, I really, really should read this. this. I'm like, like, you know what? what? Screw it. it. I'm I'm not not doing doing anything anything right now. You know, everyone has all the time in the world. world. Go Go watch that old movie movie you've always been saying you need to see. Go go listen to that old book. And it's sticking on theme. I'm grateful I did it. It's it's there's a reason why people always say, Have you read this? Have you seen this movie? You know, they're great. Have you seen this man? But uh to to move on just a little bit. We before we get into our thankful topics, we have an honorable mention. Yeah, yeah so you know, know little uh, behind the scenes here, so show you kind of the workings of the show. show. Robert, Robert and I, we, we knew we wanted to talk about movies that we're thankful for, and we decided to compile a, you know different, different lists. lists. And we started looking at our different lists to see where there was some overlap and, and where we could condense it into our our few topics. topics. You know, you maybe, maybe it was because it was fresh, fresh in our minds from talking, talking about it last week, week but right at the top, top of our list, both of us, Saving Private Ryan. Ryan. I mean, oh, oh gosh. I, 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 I don't, don't want to say where to start with this movie. movie. I, I could talk, talk about, about it for hours because, because, hey, 
I didn't know where to start start last week, week, and we we could have talked about it for hours hours then. then. I mean, we can talk about it most of the show. Yeah. yeah, If you go back and watch it. Yeah, yeah, please. please. If, if you, you want to hear us talk more about Saving Private Ryan, Ryan, go go watch and listen to last week's episode. But to be brief and sum up my feelings on it, it's a you know it's a powerful movie that really makes you grateful not just for you know the power of cinema or a great movie from Spielberg, maybe his best, but you know it makes you grateful for all the sacrifices that have been made to to put you here in this spot right now to give you the freedoms you have, the opportunity you have. It's you know it's a debt that can never be paid, and you know. If you're not thankful for that, then I don't know what you would be thankful for. What are you doing here? Exactly. Exactly. Are you American? Yeah. It... Are you a traumatized American? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe just a little. <laughs> just, just a tad. If you're yeah. a traumatized American, then no, I would not recommend watching that movie. No. <laughs> but, no it's... Uh, if you're not traumatized, you will be. <laughs> I was actually talking yeah. to a coworker about it, and mm-hmm. he, he, he told me a few of the things in there. He's like, yeah, when that happened, I just that hurt like, yeah yeah there, there's nothing not in that movie that won't make you hurt if you are a heartless soul you'll probably find something in there and be like yeah that kind of hurt i mean look at jed <laughs> <laughs> it's like a like, like, like i, I don't, don't want to spoil it for those, those who haven't seen, seen the movie, movie but, but robert, robert you remember, you remember that, that scene with up on, on the stairs, stairs? He's, he's the, the he, has he has all the, the ammo, ammo yes, over his shoulder. yes okay yeah i was like uh who's is that the corporal yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that hurt. hurt. That see, that one didn't hurt me as bad. Uh, for me, it was the medic, that and the yeah. kid on the beach. Those oh, two were the ones yeah. that like. I'm like, oh, terrible. Yeah. But if you want the rest of our thoughts, go check out yes. the last episode because, like Jed said, we could talk hours for about this. But we got mm-hmm. other plans. Yes. And uh, I think I'm doing the next. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm up on. Yeah, that. you're. I'm, show, show the, the way. way. Lead the, the way. way. <laughs> I will lead the way. <laughs> this is the way. way. Uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Now, this is a huge difference from uh, Saving Private Ryan because, uh, well, it's Spider Man. <laughs> There's a huge difference. It's not history. Right. But this I mean, movie kind of made history by its art style. Yeah. If you think about it, I haven't seen a movie ever do anything like this mm. where they made it to look like it came out of a comic book yeah yeah, yeah. like all the different thought bubbles popping up and then mm-hmm. even when he reads the comic it turns into his comic or like, like you, you know speaking, speaking of, of animation, animation i love how you know miles, miles morales, morales throughout, throughout the film, film he, he starts, starts out at, what, what is it 16, 16 frames per second, per second. His, his animation speed is different than all the other spider-man in the, in the movie. movie they, they come, come in at i think it's a full 24 frames a second but then the more he gets you know, the, the more, more closer he gets, he gets to becoming Spider-Man, Spider-Man, the more he accepts this is who he is, the faster his frame rate gets until it's up at 24, just like the rest of them. It's a subtle thing where if you're watching it, you're like, man, he, he's not as smooth or as fluid as the rest of them because, you know, he's not. He's new at this. But the further he goes along, is like, when he gets to that point, you're like, man, he's there. It's a little subconscious trick. It's so cool. Yeah, okay, so Into the Spider-Verse uh, played at 24 frames a second. But the characters were often animated at 12 frames a second. 12, oh, that's, that's it. it. Wow. Yeah. See what I mean? This is why I'm thinking about this movie. <laughs> it has really changed the... The two... Like, I I actually thought that a lot of it was 3D. I didn't realize it was all 2D. Yeah, it, it's, it's insane. Because the way they did it and everything, all the different layers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I didn't know that. You learn something new every day, especially on this channel, so subscribe. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Um, but another thing that I really liked about it is I really like Miles Morales. Mm-hmm. He's, I love I like his character. Yeah. And so seeing a movie with him was really mm-hmm. cool. And then seeing the whole Peter B. Parker and all the different Spider-Man, it finally opened up the multiverse that I, I really right. enjoyed. Any comic <laughs> that I have read uh, when I was hanging around and, Stefan and I used to work together. Yeah. We, uh, which we still do. He's, he's, not, he's not gone. Yeah. Talking about when we were in high school, uh, we would read some of those comics and uh, he mentioned about the multiverse. It's like, oh, there's more Spider Man. That's cool. Mm-hmm. And one, one of the, the things, things I love most about this movie is it's, it's not, not like, like, here's the, the, the anime Spider Man, here's the, 
the you know the detective spider-man here is black spider-man because so often when you when you see multiverse stories it's like here's old superman or here's asian thor and that's it all of these characters like this isn't the black hispanic spider-man that's miles morales this isn't you know some lady spider-man that's gwen stacy all of these different people, they are their own characters. They earned that, you know, and so you never look at it and say, oh, that's Black Spider-Man. And so, you know, I don't want to, like, derail it too much, but looking at two different upcoming DC projects right now, we have two different Black Superman projects in the works. One from J.J. Abrams and one from Michael B. Jordan. And just from what I'm hearing, you know, little bits and pieces, I'm much more looking forward to the uh, Michael B. Jordan one because there, it doesn't seem like, you know, they're focusing on the fact that he's Superman, but black. It's, no, no, this is a different character. He just happens to be Superman, happens to be black. But he's his own person. And really exploring that. Yeah, I, like, I remember uh, hearing about, yeah, Daniel Craig. He was yeah. like, it, it's kind of insulting for the James Bond movies. Kind of insulting that they want to replace James Bond with a woman. It's like, why don't that make her her own character? Yeah, it'd yeah. be one. It would be way better. Mm -hmm. You won't lose audiences that way because it's right. like, oh, hey, it's a new character. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. yeah, it's not. Oh, we're replacing this guy with a girl. Right. It's like, no, no, give her her own person. And yeah, th these movies, you, you see them as completely like Gwen. St you see her, uh, mm -hmm. I, and I love how they do the different characters too, mm -hmm. because they are all unique in their own way. Like, yeah, I mean, even, even different, different animation, animation styles, styles. Like, like Peter Porker's Looney Tunes or uh, Penny Parker, I think her name was, is the anime mm -hmm. is like chibi over, over the top. top. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas Cage. Yes, yes. He did a great job. I freaking love that Spider-Man. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm going to take this cube thing home with me. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but I'm going to. <laughs> I mean, Nicholas Cage is well, maybe not everything, but he will take almost anything and make it better. I mean, side note, there was one time, Jed. I hope you don't mind me sharing this. Jed Go had a Nicholas Cage filter on his. <laughs> you remember? Yes, that? he had a Nicholas Cage filter on his computer, and we went to go Google something for. I think it was an episode, or was prep for an episode. I can't remember. We went to Google something. This is when I was down in Rexburg with him. We went to go I remember. Google something. It's. Oh, a, little a little bit of backstory. backstory. It's, it's a filter or a, an add-on on Google Chrome that will take any and all images in the browser and turn them into different pictures and gifs of Nicolas Cage. Yeah, so, uh, and when we say everything, and we mean everything, because we Googled something, looked it up on Wikipedia, and the first thing we see is uh, the Nicolas Cage with uh, his hair down, <laughs> looking in the sun. Yes. What, what's that from? I think, I think it's, it's from, from uh, 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 Con, Con Air. Air. Con Air, okay. Yeah. yeah, so it's that's the picture in the Wikipedia page. And then we're going through and reading all about Nicolas Cage history. Uh huh. It's, it's glorious. glorious. I, oh, it was great. I know it's, I noticed we just derailed off that, but I had to say it. It's so funny. <sighs> yes. But, you know, I, 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 you know, part, part of me is hoping, like, like hey, you know, know we, we got to have, have a, you know, Nicolas Cage, Cage have a resurgence in his career, career because, you know, he's, he's had, had a, a bit of financial problems lately, or not even lately, but like 10 years ago. And it's gotten to the point where it's like, hey, I will be in any movie. I really need money right now. Some bad investments, you know, I, I, need, to, I, mean, I need money right now. And so, you know, part of me is thinking like, you know, we, we need a Nicolas Cage comeback. But on the other hand, you know, he, uh, you know, because he'll be in anything, there's two people or two kinds of movies that he's in now. One is, I don't have a good idea for a movie and I'm not that talented, but hey, I can get Nicolas Cage in my movie. So, hey, go for it. Because that will add, you know, a little bit more to your box office. But then, but then the, the other, other kind of movies he's in is, you know, you know someone like, like, hey, I've got, got a really weird movie that I want to get made, but it's so weird. No, no one's going to watch it unless, unless I get Nicolas Cage in it. Nicolas Cage is the sort of guy who would make this weird thing totally believable. It totally work. But then because people see, hey, look, it's Nicolas Cage. I'll go watch it. And then that way we get a lot more weird independent movies that actually are good because of Nicolas Cage. So I don't know if uh, he really needs a resurgence in his career. But hey, speaking of resurgence or career comebacks, you want to talk about John Wick? 
Oh, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> that I man mean, has made, like, he, he kind of disappeared for a little bit. And then, yeah, yeah I mean, he, he was, was one of the biggest, biggest jokes in Hollywood for years. years. He, he was, was always that dumb, whoa, guy. <laughs> he, he was and, dead. And, and that was like at a, the good point of his career, you know, you know, the, the point break, the, uh, the uh, what's his, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And it kind of got to the point where you know, he's doing like Dracula or Constantine, where people are like, I can't take him seriously. He's the woe guy. And his career just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And he did a little movie called John Wick. He's not the woe guy anymore. Oh, oh he... no, it said it's the whoa guy. Yeah, it's oh crap, crap. John, John Wick, Wick is coming. coming. Oh, oh man. Like I mean, like on one level, level I'm I'm grateful, grateful for the John Wick movies because it brought back Keanu Reeves, it's given him a better career. And I mean, think, think of all the amazing things, things, things that John Wick is doing now that we wouldn't have without John Wick. But on the other hand, oh my gosh. I mean, how many action movies have you watched, Robert, where you're watching you're like, oh man, the like they're Shot shot, 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 edit, edit, edit. You, you can't, can't see what's, what's going, going on. on. Everything's shaky. It's just oh, too it's much. That is my biggest complaint, by the way. Matter of fact, I actually asked Jed one time, like, hey, can we do an episode where I could just complain about how Hollywood uses guns <laughs> and how they do their action sequences and how they do shaky cam? John oh, Wick terrible. is like the perfect example of how to do it. Like, they even like, have proper hey. shaky cam. Yeah, yeah it was like, like you know, they'll, they'll, they'll use shaky, shaky cam when, when it calls, calls for it. it. But, but for, for the, the most, most part, we're, we're just going, going to have really, really great, great choreography. I'm going to step, step back with the camera and just say, hey, let's, let's just capture what's going on. Don't, don't need to do anything fancy because, because what, what you're seeing here is going, going to be good, good enough, enough already. already. We're, we're not, not, we're we're not, not trying, trying to hide, hide anything. anything. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's cool. Well, that's to it. It's the same uh, thing with how all the Mission Impossibles kind of yeah. feel a little more is because my hands are just flaring. <laughs> uh, it's more real because uh you actually see the actor doing the work mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. let's see keanu reeves he trained like what half a year something, something like, like that, that. He, he trained for quite some time and not, not and to he, the extent of like uh the guy from nobody where he like did two years worth of training right, right. But, but but he, he keeps, keeps up training for all, all these movies. movies he's always trying, trying to perfect, perfect his craft, craft. Mm -hmm. and so they're in uh, doing martial arts. They're in doing gun, uh, three gun shooting. So he learned he can move mm -hmm. with the guns well, know how to properly handle them. Yep. And like, yeah, it has a John Wick also it brings to the table the fantasy with a little bit of realism. Yeah. 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 You, what, what's the fantasy part? You're not going to shoot everyone in the head. Just throwing that out. No. Nah. And. and there's, there's, there's no, no way, way that all of New York, York City is secretly an assassin except for, like, five people. Who happen to be, like, birds. Right. I mean, you... Like, <laughs> like even the you birds. Know, watching, watching that first John Wick movie, you're like, you know, hey, how many people are actually in on this when, you know, he gets in a taxi and just gives a guy a gold coin and is like, all right, yes, sir, Mr. Wick. Like, he just got a random taxi. How'd that work? But then in John Wick 2, when they're in Central Park and uh, Winston just, uh, like, puts something on his phone and all of a sudden everyone in the park stops turns and looks at him and then they go back to movie you're like oh crap it's like every everyone in the world is an assassin and they're all coming for john wick which by the way hence the poster yeah <laughs> john wick <two> poster. <laughs> that's uh yeah it, oh man i was telling my parents i was like because we watched the first john wick on mm -hmm. mid angel i was showing them i'm like this movie's amazing guys gotta check it out yeah like, okay yeah sure because my mom was talking about how she wanted to watch a an action movie. It's like I got one for you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you guys want to watch John Wick two and three? I'm like, wait, does it leave you on cliffhangers? It's like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. maybe we'll wait for John Wick four to come out. <sighs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll watch yeah. it on my own then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they'll, they'll watch them someday. Oh yeah. Well, once John Wick four releases, they're definitely gonna watch it. But back. <laughs> sorry. Back to the point at hand. Mm. Um. They, mind you, I, they up the game every single movie. Yeah. But what was it that you did? Like, I, cause I asked you how much they up the game, and I think, yeah, John Wick 2. And you're like, have you ever headshot somebody with a horse? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, act, what? Oh, no, so that, that was, that was, was the third one. That was the, the third second, one? Okay. Yeah. yeah the, the second, second one, they're, they're doing things like, like a, a, do you remember the, the sumo wrestler? wrestler? How much it took to bring oh, him down? Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, oh gosh. gosh. That's right. The second one had one of my favorite lines. Professional courtesy. Yeah. 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 yeah and then the key. Okay, yeah. The third one. That's the one that left me with the biggest cliffhanger of all where I'm like, uh huh. Googling when's John Wick 4 coming out <laughs> just to be disappointed that it was supposed to be out. Yeah, yeah it, it was. was. But, but, you know, we, we do know some great people who are going to be in it, like uh, Donnie Yen. Yen. He's, he's a, one, one of the greatest, greatest action stars, stars in the world. For those of you who, I mean, if, if you've seen Rogue One, he's the blind guy. guy. Or uh, Clancy, Clancy Brown, Brown he's, he's going, going to be in it. He's, you know, I love him as an actor. He's probably more famous as a voice actor. Like, he's Mr. Krabs in SpongeBob. He's Long Fang in, yeah, yeah, he's Long Fang in Avatar. He's Lex Luthor in, like, every every cartoon ever. He's a... Uh, he's, he's Savage Oppress, Oppress in Star Wars, in, in the Clone Wars. Dude, Dude is in freaking everything, and it was one of the coolest voices ever. So you're telling me that this guy, who in real life is like 6'5", and he has a face that looks like a brick, like, hi, I have the coolest voice in the world. You see why I was cast as Lex Luthor. You're you telling me that he's in John Wick? I'm there. I'm sold. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, for me, the first thing, every time I hear Donnie Yen, I think of it, man. Yeah. Because, yeah. well, oh, that's an scene. action-packed movie, it, man does it yeah, yeah i mean if, if, if you're yeah, like if you're told like hey you know donnie yen with kung fu that, that doesn't sell you watch you Do- know if man uh what, what is, is it the, the dojo scene where he fights, fights 10 people at once <laughs> that gets your blood pumping oh uh <laughs> so we got we just got a chat hey welcome isaiah uh hey. Nicholas Cage didn't know that property tax for a castle is kind of spending. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he just needs to make profit fairness, off those filters. Yeah, yeah in, in all, all fairness, fairness, you know, a lot of his money problems were because of property and bad management, management and stuff. But that, that was during, during the housing, housing market, market crash in 2008. So a lot, lot of people lost, lost a lot of money then. Wait, and, hold, you wait, know, where'd he buy a castle? Dude, Dude, he, he bought a freaking dinosaur, dinosaur skull. I, he owned a T Rex skull. I don't know where he buys all this stuff. I'm Googling it. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Cage Castle. I spelled it wrong. I'm an idiot. <sighs> Nicholas Cage. I mean, Dang, that's a nice castle. Yeah, Nick, yeah, Nick Cage, Cage is basically, basically like, like his character, character from, from, uh, um, from what's, what's called? From National Treasure. Treasure. He's, he's, I don't, I don't want to say necessarily going on adventures, but he's, he's traveling, traveling the world doing really weird stuff. You look at him like, wait, you've, you've done, done this and this and this, and you know these different languages? I'm like, for I think it was the second Ghost Rider movie. He got, got an actual legit, uh, I think it was an Ankh amulet, you know, an actual legit talisman from ancient Egypt, and had it sewn into the leather jacket that he wears as Ghost Rider. You know, the <laughs> thing is like 3,000 years old, but he did it because he's freaking crazy. <laughs> I don't know what this amulet thing is, but I'm going to take it. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, gosh. He's, uh, he's basically like, like a real life, uh, what, what is his name? Ben Gates or Indiana, Indiana Jones or, you know. You know he, he's, he's plundering, plundering the world, the world. Like, like Nathan Drake. Drake. He's, he's a real, real life Nathan, Nathan Drake. Drake. Oh man! If we were talking about games, I was grateful for. Yeah. Charter would be yeah. in there. But uh, you did mention uh, Indiana Jones, which that I did. By the way, is on my thankful list because I really enjoy Indiana Jones. In fact, I actually own the Indiana Jones uh, complete collection. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look, Look at those three movies. movies. All, All three, three of those great, great movies. movies. Yes, three of them. Three. <laughs> yeah, yes, all three. As a matter of fact, actually, so, so excited, excited that the, the fourth one is being directed by James Mangold and is coming out soon. One second, Jed. I can't hear you. Oh, he oh, can't, can't hear me. me. He's, he's going on an adventure. adventure. He's coming back with, the, with, with loot. loot. Hopefully, Hopefully there's, there's no traps or people betraying him. him. What's, What's that you got there, Robert? What was it? What's that, that you got, got there, Robert? You, you just went on a little adventure. What have you brought back? Oh, it's just disappearing. No, <laughs> Thanos, stop snapping. Okay, one cursed. second, everybody. The, the, the treasure is cursed, Robert. We're going we're gonna to take away my virtual background. I know everyone can see my computer right now, but you know what? Oh, well. Yeah, screw it. Right. Ta-da. See? Look, it's, it's a room. Boom. Indiana Jones. Dude, this is like gorgeous. gorgeous. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look, Look at that. that. My movies are upside down. <laughs> One second, let me fix that. I, I gotta say though, my favorite one, and Jed, I, I want to know what your favorite Indiana Jones movie. And uh, anyone in chat, the one person, <laughs> please, uh, if you like Indiana Jones, let us know what your favorite yeah, movie. Tell is. us. My favorite one's The Last Crusade. 
Maybe because it has Sean Connery. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's close, close for me between, between Raiders and Last Crusade, Crusade but, but I do think, think I give, give the edge to Last Crusade. Crusade. I, I don't know what it is about it, uh, but it's just, it's a fun movie. I think that's, yeah. the, because that's the one that got me to like, love adventure movies, love all the, the, then again, I'm also a history buff. So the Last Crusades are yeah. like, oh, that's pretty, I mean, all of them have great history. Yeah. But I was like, the Last Crusades, that's where all the knights were. That's where all the, yeah. You know, and yeah. my childhood fantasies like. Swords, knights, shield. Yeah, yeah. and I'm mean, like, uh, Sean, Sean Connery, Connery is great, and it. it's, it's weird to think he's only 16 years older than Harrison Ford, Ford but they, they had great chemistry together as father and son. And, and you know, like Miriam from, from the first Indiana, Indiana Jones movie, I love her; she's great. great. But if I'm being honest, honest, my favorite love interest in all the Indiana, Indiana Jones movies is Dr. Elsa Schneider because she's she's funny, she's charming, she's you know smart as a whip. But gosh, gosh dang it, she's, she's also, also freaking evil. evil. But <laughs> not, not, not in a cartoonish like her. <laughs> but not in a cartoonish way. She is also really vulnerable. Really, like, like she, she has, has moments of you know being open and soft. And, and I, mean, I mean, yeah, yeah the, the, their their, uh, their, their story, story together, Indy and Ilsa. The, like, like it's, it's uh, uh, it never would have worked, worked. But dang it, man, I wish it did. I wish it could have. Yeah. That movie. What else? It's, some of the lines in there, like you, you build up in all the other movies, where it's like, oh yeah, he's Indiana Jones, and then he meets the dad, just like <laughs> Indiana. That's the name of the dog. I like that dog. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry Sean. Sean. They, they hit, hit us. us. <laughs> <laughs> it, took, oh, it took me. I, love it. I was reading some chat. <laughs> It, it's, it's it's incredible, incredible. like uh you know it's, it's to the, the point, point where you know oftentimes if like if i'm in a, a church setting or if i'm you know if i'm at work and i have to talk about you know something inspiring a lot of the time i will reference the third indiana jones movie and talk about walking by faith and because that 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 scene that sequence where he has to just step out into nothingness and trust in the words of his father it's it's a it's a great metaphor for faith, for hope, for trust. It's I love it. It's it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I just love some of the some of the scenes in there where it's just like he's sitting there looking at all the all the cups and he's like uh, going through the book and it's teaching you history right there. So yeah. like Uncharted, Indiana Jones, very history base so it's going through it's like no it would have been a small cup not a gold cup mm -hmm. and then the knight does his thing so isaiah said i don't know if you can you read the chat jed um, um i could i have the i could but i have the uh the live stream in a very small window down there for me to see so i i could pull it up but i i'd mess up everything up so <laughs> that, uh, well, now simply I put, no <laughs> make it simple yeah, I, yeah, okay, yeah. So Isaiah just said the whole ending of The Last Crusade was wonderful. And I, I agree. I really did. They literally, literally rode off into, into the sunset. sunset. It's true. See, I like him taking on Tank. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, yeah. That was an intense scene, though. But yeah, the ending, I I, I loved it. Uh, the chat that you missed, Jed, uh, he's, I missed the fun action adventure flicks like Indiana Jones. We're, we're excluding the one that doesn't exist, right? right? Yes. Right? Very, very excited, excited that James Mangold, a very talented director, is making the fourth Indiana, Indiana Jones movie. It's, it's the fourth, fourth and you can't, can't tell me otherwise. Me otherwise. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, you, you made a really good point. Uh, I say limited cast with great story arcs. It, yeah. Indiana Jones is, yeah, it's a great example of you don't need a huge cast to make a good story. Mm -hmm. like, like sometimes, sometimes having, having a huge cast will work to your benefit if that's the sort of story, story you're telling. telling. Like, like you, you look, look at Lord of the Rings or Dune, huge casts. Oh, sometimes, sometimes it, it only needs like four or five characters, characters and you can, can make, make a perfect movie. movie. Yeah, I mean, it's, all you really need is a protagonist, antagonist. You don't need much of I anything mean, else, really. You know, you, know, you, you could, could do, do just, just a protagonist. A protagonist. You know, there's, there's a Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds movie where it's, it's just him buried alive in a coffin for the whole movie. movie. He has, he has like, like a, a lighter, a cell phone, and an there's, There's like, like one or two, two other things, things and, and he calls, calls and like talks, talks to the 911 lady over the phone, but it's he manages, manages just the one character, the one actor, 
to captivate, captivate you for a whole, whole 90 minutes. minutes. It's, it's incredible. incredible. I mean, Ryan Reynolds, too. I, mean, I don't yeah, know if Devin doesn't really care much for him, but I think he's great. It's, it's one, one of his, his rare dramatic, dramatic roles, and he's, he's really good, good in it. it. I'll have to take a look. What's that movie called? Buried. Buried. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, one, one actor, actor one word. word. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a uh, brief, brief to, to the, the point. point. All right. Well, speaking of brief to the point, we're going to go. I don't, I don't have anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we just drink a, from our yeah. podcast well, uh... water bottle. You can't <laughs> see because it's flickering in and out. And yes. Or, uh, on audio. You, know, you, you have, have your, uh, your you have your invisible uh, invisible, uh, invisible bottle. bottle. I have my invisible uh, hip flask right, right here. here. It's uh, <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> it really is invisible. Yeah. yeah it's a uh, you know it's, it's just water, water people, people. But you know it's fun. It's funny and. You can't, can't tell, tell because it's invisible, invisible but I actually, I actually have, have something, something on here that, that you know, speaking, speaking of gratitude, gratitude means a lot to me. me. It's, it's a, it's, it's an, an etching on the, the hip flask of Luke in the Last Jedi, and you know the scene where he's looking out at the the twin sons right before he dies. And uh, I mean, oh gosh, moving on to the Last Jedi. I mean, I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get the, uh, you know, I'll address the elephant in the room right away. I know this movie is divisive. I know there's a lot of people that hate this movie. I know there's a lot of people that love this movie, where it's like their favorite Star Wars movie ever. <laughs> yeah, see, I mean, just like, look at us right here. Robert, he hates the movie. And uh, what, you know, it's not my favorite Star Wars movie. It is up there for me. I mean, I mean, you look at it, there's, like, it's a long movie. It's the longest Star Wars movie. There's a lot of different things in it. And some of them... the longest? Yeah, it's the longest Star Wars movie. I think before that... I was so bored, Jed. I think before that, the longest was Attack of the Clones. Like, there's a lot of stuff in the movie... Just because there's so much. There's a lot of stuff that I don't like. There's a lot of stuff that I do like. But there's one thing in a particular that I want to say I'm grateful for. And by one th thing, I mean like one one uh, storyline of the you know of the so many in there. But it's the one that involves Luke, Ray, and and Kylo Ren. It's uh like not not to get too personal. I I'm a pretty private person. I don't like really talking about my personal life all that much, but it uh, it came out at a point in my life that I was going through some uh, some personal struggles with, and you know, like Robert or the me, some of these people, they they know a lot of what I was going through and even what I've gone through since. And that storyline with those three characters, it really helped me out a lot. It you know, it's a very personal movie to me. You know, those three characters, you you know, take them one at a time. You look at Ray, she. She was, she was telling, telling herself, herself a lot of lies about you know, what, what she wanted, wanted her family, where, where she came from, all this stuff. And the whole movie, she's just getting beaten down, telling herself, you know, being, being told, hey, all this sucks. sucks. Like, hey, I want to meet Luke Skywalker. He hates you. You suck. Or uh, all, all these different things. things. And, uh, you know, brat. finally, she, she meets she someone and connects with someone. And, you know, maybe it wasn't the right time for both of them. But having someone who... You were able to go to when, you know, when no one else would. People who should have been there weren't for her. You know, having that person there, you know, it kind of taught me, hey, you know, there's going to be times in my life where I, you know, people who should be doing things or who I should be able to turn to, they won't. And, you know, it sucks, but that's life. You know, people aren't always going to measure up. But, but you'll always have someone that you can turn to. You, like, you'll always have times where you feel alone, but you're never alone. You just have to know who to look to. And, you know, looking at, at Luke, Luke, I mean, oh gosh, I mean, I, I understand it's very controversial. And I totally understand why a lot of people feel the way that they do about Luke. But, you know, part of you know my, my personal life experiences have shaped or colored how I see Luke in that movie. He... He's, he's made a lot of decisions that he regrets, and his, you know, he's, he's afraid, afraid, he feels guilty, that, and that part of that, you know, that's part of why he's isolated himself, but a lot of, the main reason why he's done it is because, look, it hurts me, it hurts other people, that sucks, but I think this is the right thing to do, and, you know, I, I certainly have related to that in parts of my life where I'm like, I don't want to do this, this, like, beyond Having, having something, something suck for me, it's going to have unintended, unfortunate uh, consequences for other people. But it's what I have to do right now. But even then, at the end of the movie, there's still hope that, you know, after fighting all that depression, all that cynicism, all that guilt and shame, there's still, hey, look, 
you know, all those people that you hurt, you, you can still be forgiven by them. You can still go back to them. You can still, you know, be united and, you know, be together again with them and, you know, be who you were this whole time, but you had forgotten. And then you look, you look at Kylo Ren in this movie. I think he's the most alone out of all of them. He's made decisions that he regrets more than even Luke. And it, uh, it shaped who he is. He, uh, he, he thinks he's lying to himself. He thinks that he's this monster and he lies to himself. He's, he tells himself that he's proud of it. You know, he knows he's a monster. And as much as he lies to himself, he knows it's, it hurts him. And he knows it's not who he is. He keeps going down this, this path of self-deceit, of lying to himself, saying, if I do this, this will make it okay. And that's something that personally I very much identified with. And, you know, granted, the movie doesn't end with him being uh, told like, you know, hey, it's going to be okay. We're all here for you. He's, the movie ends with him being told, hey, look, kid, you messed up. You, I can't help you anymore. If you're going to get help, it's got to be you. And, you know, you look at where that path led him, it was, it's empty. Now he is alone. And I mean, yeah, I, I'm rambling at this point. I'm ranting, but. You know, I know, I know the, the movie's, movie's not perfect. perfect. I could, I mean, I could talk for days about all my problems with the movie, but that that storyline of those three people who you know, the lies that they told themselves and the mistakes that they've made, and you know, just saying like, "Hey, look, confront your failures. Look at all those things, and don't forget them. Don't bury them. But learn on, or learn from them, and move on. You know, it's the only way to improve. To uh, not let the past die, but not don't." Don't, don't keep, keep it alive longer than it needs to be. You know, move, move on, on, learn, live. I, I did like that scene, one of the few scenes I liked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did like the scene where he uh, went and saw Leia again right before he confronted Kylo. I yeah. did like that. I did appreciate it. Yeah. That, that's all I got. Yeah, it, was it was a very, very special scene. scene. Yeah, yeah it, I know, I know it's, uh, you, you have wildly, wildly different opinions from, from me on, on that movie, movie. And, and hey, that's that's, that's perfectly, perfectly fine. fine. Yeah, but, you know, there, those are good thoughts, though. Like, I, yeah. I never really looked at it that way. I looked at it more of, like, in the story aspect. Like, oh, right, right, right. And, and I, I do I do have, uh, I do certainly have problems, a few problems with some of those things. Not the same problems as some other people have. You know, even on some things like the Canto Bite stuff, I'm like, you know, I got a lot of problems with this. But I like this about it. Doesn't save the Canto Bite scenes for me, but, you know, there are redeemable things about it for me. But, hey, you know... Uh, Moving on from this, there are definitely movies that we can agree on that both of us are grateful for. Um, I mean, you know, talking about all these Lucasfilm ones like Indiana Jones, The Last Jedi, and, you know, as a side note, Last Jedi, it's not my favorite Star Wars movie. Empire is my favorite Star Wars movie, but, you know, there's things in Last Jedi I was more uh, grateful for. But, uh, yeah, there's, uh, you know, these movies, they inspire us, they entertain us, they, uh, they bring us together. And, uh, I mean, Robert, the one you're talking about next... I, yeah, I, I can, can think, think of, of very, very few movies, movies that, that do that better. better. Yeah, no kidding. It's the, what, oh, have you seen that YouTube video? Yes. Where it's, uh, Which one? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Oh, uh, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. That's right. All of them. Lord yeah. of the Rings. We figured we put them all together. It's, it's one 10 hour movie. movie. Oh, what, what is it called? Uh, it's, it's a rap. Just, it's like bros being bros or something like that. Can't, Can't say, say I've heard of it. it. All right, I'll look. I'll have to look it up. All right, yeah, but it's super funny because it's talking about how uh, these you got all these guys, nine mm -hmm. guys headed out to go destroy the ring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> hey guys, sorry, Sean. <laughs> Sean, <made me. laughs> rip. Uh, but it, it was just like a bunch of bros going out on a quest to go do something. Like talk about mm -hmm. an adventure. I mean, yeah. Indiana Jones brought my adventurous side, like especially like with scouts and history and stuff. Uh -huh. Lord of the Rings brought to the table the fantasy genre for me, and I didn't I didn't watch it until I was like I think it was twelve, thirteen, but I watched it at the Meads house actually when they lived over here, uh, and we I was sitting there watching Fellowship, and you know it's a long movie, so for a thirteen year old to sit there, twelve or thirteen year old to sit there on a butt for three and a half hours. Four hours? Depends, Depends on, on if you're, you're watching, watching theatrical, theatrical or extended. extended. Uh, it's the meets. They had it. They had extended. Okay, uh, it's, it's four hours then. Really theatrical. But I'm sitting there watching the extended, and I usually can't sit for like an hour. 
I fidget too much. As a matter of fact, I still fidget while I'm standing. <laughs> hey, uh, me too. too. But like, I just sat there watching the fellowship. Like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. This is a good movie. That's cool. And then watch the second one. Watch the third one. It was after. I believe we watched it after school because we walked nice. home from school. And I went to their house, and we we were watching it. I was like, "This is great." So not only did I get to like. That was my first fantasy movie to watch mm-hmm. and be like so. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not involved. Just engrossed and, and captured in it. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like I want to. I don't want to be in Middle Earth now. Yeah, you're you're, like, you're eh, whisked eh, away to another world. world. Mm-hmm. And then it all the I discover all the lore behind it and all that that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like. I mean, we're in, uh, Peter Jackson. Like after reading the, listening to the books, it's like okay, I'm impressed that you're able to pull, yeah, all this information and kind of just give us the base and the like necessary stuff. Mm-hmm. But the movies captured me to be like, oh well, I kind of want to know all the unnecessary stuff because it's kind of cool to listen to. Yeah, uh, I don't have the courage though to <laughs> dive deep yes. into the Cimmerillion. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just in terms, terms of a uh, you know the accuracy, it, it might be the the greatest uh, book to movies adaptations ever. ever. They were all able to put in so much. I mean, granted, they had to cut out a lot too, but to put in so much of a dense, long storyline, and you sit it and you're you're engrossed the whole time. You never feel like, all right, now let's hear the long histories of the kings of Middle Earth and you know Denethor, the son of Ecthelion, son of oh, you could so easily be bored by it. Or so easily be like, I'm lost. I don't know what's going on. Not for a second. <laughs> All these elf names. What are they talking oh, gosh. about? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, you know it's funny. Okay. Uh, oh, let's see. The Hobbit trilogy sucks. The Lord of the Rings. Let's adapt one 1,100 pages into three movies. The Hobbit. Let's adapt 300 pages into three movies. Yeah. Yeah. That's accurate. I, I, yeah. I kind of. I mean. I, I don't mind the Hobbit movies, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, I feel like we're kind they, of building it a little. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they don't, don't live up to the Lord of the Rings trilogy. trilogy. I, I will say, it technically, technically wasn't an adaptation of the Hobbit book. book. You know, because the Hobbit, for those of you who don't know, was written before the Lord of the Rings, and some time had passed between the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. And if you read them, especially if you read them back to back, there's a lot of inconsistencies, you know, with the world, the characters and stuff like that, especially the tone, because The Hobbit was a children's book and Lord of the Rings was definitely intended for older people, for, you know, for adults. And so at one point, Tolkien decided, hey, I'm going to go back and rewrite The Hobbit to be more in line with what was later established in Lord of the Rings. I think he was going to call it The Quest for Erebor, but... It, it, was it was getting, getting to the point where he's like, like okay, okay, this, this isn't, isn't even the Hobbit, Hobbit anymore. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to bother. But, but a lot of those notes and stuff still exist. And, and so that, that was a lot of what the basis for the Hobbit movies were. It's, it's, it's the Hobbit, but also certain, certain things that were in the appendices and Lord of the Rings, some, some stuff, stuff that was in the Silmarillion. All that stuff did happen. But but yeah, even with all that, it did feel a little like, do we really need to see this part? Yeah, it's like you're kind of forcing a little little much there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there there was definitely some things in there. Like to give an example um, of what you're saying, Jed, in mm-hmm. the Hobbit book, the original Hobbit book, the dwarves didn't seem like the dwarves I knew from Lord of the Rings. No, they they were they were kind of cowardly. They would run away from the trolls. They would, and then meanwhile mm-hmm. in Lord of the Rings, you got Gimli standing on a freaking tomb saying, "Come at me." Yeah. But in the movie, you get to see the side of dwarves that I knew from Lord of the Rings, where it's like, oh, three trolls, not a problem. We got fifteen dwarf, fourteen. Yeah. yeah. 14 dwarves we got this i don't know and but in token as a writer tremendous oh, oh yeah. yeah but you yeah you have to be like you have to want to know the story in order to go through them because they are long yeah they have a lot of things in there where it's like that that's a lot of detail that i that went over my head uh-huh. uh it, but it all started with thanks to peter jackson these movie adaptations Yep. Uh, I mean, yeah. For for me, it was, for me it was different. I, you know, growing up, I wasn't allowed to to watch PG thirteen movies, 
And so for me, it started by uh, by reading the books. You know, I'd always heard everyone talk about Lord of the Rings. It's Lord of the Rings this, Lord of the Rings that. It's so great. Oh, you haven't watched those movies? What a loser. I mean, no one said like, hey, what a loser. But, you know, I definitely did feel left out. And so I remember, you know, Oh, do, do kids still do this with like the the book catalogs that get passed around to school every like every year like hey you know buy some new books and encourage like literacy and reading with kids and stuff and you know i love i loved reading and so i was like you know oh i, I was just like got so excited looking at these all these books and stuff but i remember one year i was like they better have lord of the rings in this and that was like the one time i asked my parents can I please have one of the, you know, some of the books from these? And they, they bought me the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit, and I devoured those books. They were incredible. And, uh, you know, later in life, you know, my brother, who's younger than me, he, you know, still wasn't allowed to watch PG-13 movies. But he was, like, he was a very smart, very precocious child. I mean, he still is very smart. But, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings looked a little too big and too dense and too mature for him. And so I said, hey, I've got an idea. I ran to the store and I bought the Lego Lord of the Rings game. And we played through the first level together. And he said, this is so cool. I'm going to read the books. We're not playing the game. I'm going to read the books. And so as a nine-year-old, he read the Lord of the Rings, the whole trilogy in one summer. That's impressive because I could, I I remember in high, like, in, uh, yeah, middle school, I got the book and I looked at it and I was like, what is this? <laughs> right? Is a field manual? <laughs> I mean, I guess it would be for people in Middle Earth. But right. um, yeah, I got to ask then, Jed. So yeah. I went from movies to books. Yeah. And I, I've spotted the differences. I, I hear the differences and I still think that it was a great job. And what, But as for you uh -huh. from reading the books and then going to watch the movies, what were your thoughts on the movies originally? I still remember the very first time I, I watched it. Um, like, it wasn't a case of, like, you know, oh, I feel swept away to this whole new world. I remember sitting down and, you know, from those opening notes and then the world has changed. You know, that opening narration and the prologue and then you get swept into the Shire. It felt exactly how it was in the books. I'm like, oh, my gosh, all, these, all the things that people have been saying over the years, the, the movies, they're right. They did it. it. I mean, I mean these, these are these are the these are the books. And then you know, even, even I was I was watching. I'm like, wait, the you know, I never stopped and said, you know, uh, you know, the the chase with the uh, the Nas school wasn't really that exciting. You know, they this didn't happen, that didn't happen. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's different because it's a movie. I don't care. This is this is Lord of the Rings. Yeah, for those of you who don't know what Jed's talking about, so if you've seen the movies, they run to a dock and then they push off. And Nazgul run up to the dock. And, and wait, Frodo's, Frodo's not there yet. yet. And, and like they're they're, they're really playing, playing up the drama. drama. He, has he has to jump. Is, is he going, going to make it in time? Because the Nazgul's right on top of him. Yeah. Whereas in the books, it's a little more like kind of a build up like, where it's like let's they have, yeah. They're, so they're sneaking all the way around and they sneak over to Mary's place. Which Mary, I I didn't realize until I read the books. He's actually a pretty wealthy dude. Yeah. Him and Pip. I mean, kind of like. Yeah, yeah, him and Pippin, Pippin are kind of like, like the, uh, you know, like, like the, the kid, kid you know in school who like his grandma died and left him a million dollars, and so he's like, yeah, yeah I don't, uh, I'm not gonna go to college. I'm, I'm not even gonna get a job. I'm just gonna live off this inheritance. But also was surprisingly chill guy. Like he's not a jerk. Like, oh, I'm rich. I'm better than you. It's just like, okay, oh, hey, you wanna, you know, you wanna brandy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, very brandy, but I guess how that works. But yeah, so. They go to his house. They stay the night there. They talk about the whole problem. Like, hey, we got to get out of here. This is what's going on. And Mary's mm -hmm. like, I got you. We're going to go into the old forest. And so there's this whole, like, thing. And a lot of, like, huge uh, Lord of the Rings fans, they they know about Tom Bombadil. Yep. And for those of you who say, what wasn't in the movie? He wasn't actually necessary to the story. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have, have worked, worked in the movie. movie. It wouldn't have worked. Uh, literally, like I remember going back and listening to it again after watching the movies again, and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, Tom Bombadil can wear the ring, the one ring, without being affected. Nothing will happen to him. Doesn't, doesn't turn, turn invisible. invisible doesn't, doesn't go, go crazy, crazy. Nothing. Yeah, he's not consumed by power. So it's the only important part he had in the movie or in the book was saving them from the tree, 
right? right. A tree that would that, uh, put them to sleep and try to get, consume them, right, for mm-hmm. food and stuff. And then when they were in the Barrow Downs, where all the undead uh, yeah. come awake. They they give, give, he gives them, them these special weapons, weapons that later Mary uses against the Witch King of Angmar. And, you know, it, uh, you can just easily say, oh, you know, they don't run into those because they don't run into the Tom Bombadil, all that stuff. And then it's okay that Mary just uses a sword. It's fine. It works. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, because Mary didn't actually kill right. like, the Witch King. He just wounds, wounds him. him. Yeah. So it's like, eh, why not? Yeah. And, and you know, I'm... He's, he's mostly, mostly there for thematic, thematic reasons, you know, what, what, what he represents in, uh, you know, with the themes and symbolism of the story and all that. You can still get a lot of those themes across in the movie without using him. So in, you know, when you're condensing all those, all that material into one movie, granted a long movie, you're going to cut things out and it would have been redundant and a waste of time. As much as I love Tom Bombadil, it was the right decision. Mm. And kind of going to the point of uh, what you said, Isaiah, was talking about the Hobbit. That's the major difference right there, too, is the fact that it's like there were things that were unnecessary in the books that could be taken out of the movie and still have the main content. Whereas the yeah. Hobbit, it's like things were added that weren't in the books or some that were in the appendices. Right. That just weren't there in general that they added. It's like, well, you didn't really need those. Yeah. yeah. Like, like the, the, the Hobbit, Hobbit book, it's, it's very episodic. It's very much, much and then, then this little short adventure happens, and then this short little adventure happens as they're going on the way to the big final adventure. But even, I mean, I remember when I watched the first Hobbit movie for the first time, I'm like, okay, it's been a long time since I've reread The Hobbit. Why are there mountains fighting each other? This is ridiculous. But then I reread the first Hobbit, or the, you know, the Hobbit, and yeah, there's like a paragraph. And, and there, there was like, like and, and then, then there were two mountains that started, started fighting, fighting each other. So they hit for cover. Once it had ended, ended they started moving on. It was like three sentences. sentences. But because they needed so much to fill out three movies, movies they're like, all right, this is going to be its own action scene. scene. It's going to last for this long. long. You're like, they didn't they need it. I think my battery's just died on my light. Ah, been plunged, plunged into the darkness. darkness. Quick, do you have Gladiel's light? Oh, look, look at that. that. It's really poor shading, <laughs> everybody. I'm sorry. I now you have a, a glowing halo, halo behind, behind your head. head. It's just the light from the sign, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Magic, movie magic. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> it's off track. Um, I could talk days about Lord of the Rings. Honestly. Yeah, and, and I mean, to be perfectly honest, honest, we have. Back, back when we were mission companions, companions walking around, around we, we spent days, days talking, talking about Lord of the Rings. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, uh, we served both me and Jed. We served missions for our church, mm-hmm. and we uh, actually served together. So where we, we first met. met. Yep, where we first met, and uh, we were actually you were with Price, right? Yep. yep. And that's where I first met. And then we ended up. There was a transfer. A transfer happens every six weeks, so you switch around uh, with different missionaries and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I. Ended up with Jed, and for six weeks we talked. And it wasn't only that wasn't the only thing. No, there there, there, there were, were other things, things but, but we talked. You heavily better believe. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was great, and I learned so much from it. Here, matter of fact, I here's I'm already a nerd. You all know. It. <laughs> all right, but let's I, say I, it. I play Lord the of the Rings, out. Lord of the Rings online. <laughs> yep. yep, massive MO and Lord of the Rings Middle Earth. Freaking loved it. And I was telling Jed all about it. And it, it we Didn't they just put out a new update, update for that game? game? I, just I just saw a trailer, trailer or something for it. it. They did. Oh, what was it? It was um, was it in Ariabor? It was the battle in Ariabor. Was, was it Ariabor or was it uh, not Area Do? That's, that's a planet in Star Wars. Wars. Um, <laughs> I, I, I know. Yeah, yeah I, know I know what you're talking about. about. I it, I only saw it once. once. It was the. It's during. I believe it's during the Battle of the Black Gate. Yeah. Uh, or during the yeah. Battle of uh, Minas Tirith. It, which which one is it where the Eastmen went over to? See, Lord of the Rings nerds. This is what we yeah. do. Maybe that we was. Should, it, I, I, I believe that was in the Battle of Pelennor Fields. Okay. Hey, hear me out, Jed. Maybe we should just find an episode one of these times where we just <laughs> yes. talk about Lord of the Rings. Hey, I'm, I'm down, down for it. it. One, one of these days, days we'll, we'll do it. it. We'll do it on like the anniversary of Lord of the Rings. Sure. sure. Or yeah. yeah. Well, uh, or maybe, maybe when, when the, the first trailer for the Lord of the Rings show comes out, because that's probably going to be in the next few months that the first trailer comes out. That's true. That's true. I'm. 
Maybe it's because I am such a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I'm nervous about that. I'm, I'm, I have, I have a, lot a lot of reason to be excited. A lot of reason to be nervous. So, so yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. see. I, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. But yeah, I'm, I'm way more nervous just because I'm like, please don't screw this up. Right. It, you know, Lord, Lord of the Rings, Rings in, in my eyes, is one of the three franchises where it's more than just a franchise. There's something special about it. There's a sense of prestige. You, know, you got Lord of the Rings because all three of those original movies were nominated for Best Picture. And not only was Return of the King nominated for Best Picture, it won Best Picture. And 11 Oscars in total. No movie has ever won more Oscars. No, it, it was 11. It was 11. Oh, okay. But yeah, it, it's one of the greatest movies of all time. And the other two are also incredible. And then for me, I think the other two you know, big franchises that are you know, just not, not necessarily special, but have just as much prestige are one, James Bond, which you know, not all the James Bond movies are great. Some of them are. But, but it's, it's, it's a franchise that's been, been around for over half the length of cinema as an art form. So it's special. It's the grandfather of all franchises. And then uh, the other one for me is just Star Wars. I mean, it changed movie making forever. Some of the Star Wars movies suck. Some of them are great. But when a new Star Wars movie comes out, everyone's like, okay, let's go see the new Star Wars movie. It is 12. Oh, it is 12? I was wrong. So I got visual... Original cinematography, makeup and hairstyling, supporting acting, uh, best picture, best director, best ad- adapted screenplay, production design, sound mixing, costume design, and film editing. It's the, the biggest, biggest sweep, sweep in, in Oscar, Oscar history. history. It literally, it literally it won, won half of the Oscars, Oscars that night. night. It's, 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 it's incredible. incredible. Can you imagine what it would have been like in there? You're just sitting there waiting for your name. And, all of a sudden it's like, and the award goes to... Peter, Peter Jackson, Jackson for the Lord of the Rings: Return of the King. No, no seriously, if you go back and watch, if you go back and back and watch that Oscar, uh, that uh, Oscar night, it's a, uh, it's something else. It's just like, and again, again, if Lord of the Rings is nominated for something, it won. You didn't have a shot. Yeah, because that movie, it it really was something special. Um, all right, so well, let's uh, we're starting. We we just hit the hour mark, so let's go ahead and transition while Robert has uh, disappeared. We're going to transition to our uh, our final I movie. fixed it, sorry. Oh, you, you fixed, fixed it. it. Okay, okay, wonderful. I'm back with my... He's son. back. Fully lit. Up. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's transition, transition to our, our final one, one where uh, this is another Best Picture winner and won several other Oscars as well. It's a very special movie. Uh, oh, dang it. You, you've been cast into darkness once more. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very special movie, not just, uh, you know, to me. It's... To me, I think this is the most American movie ever made. It's uh, it's another interesting franchise where, as the movies have gone on, each movie has perfectly reflected where the main character and the main actor was in his career. I'm talking about Rocky. It, like, you look at that first Rocky movie. Sylvester Stallone was basically homeless when he wrote that movie. And yeah, for those of you who didn't know, he wrote that movie. He was nominated for an Oscar for that movie. And, uh, and uh, you know, he, he knew he had something special on his hands. He went to the studios, you know, and started shopping it around and said, like, "Hey, I don't care that I'm broke. I don't care that I literally have to sell my dog just to keep by and feed myself. I've got something you want, and I know you want it. I know you want it really bad." And they said, you know, they took a look at it like, "This is one of the greatest movies we've ever seen. We will pay you a ton of money for it." They were going to offer him like a million dollars for the script, which for someone that poor. And, you know, especially, you know, back in the 70s, a million dollars, I mean, a million dollars now, I'd do it in a heartbeat, but a million dollars then, oh. And uh, he said, eh, one condition, I got to be the main character. They're like, you've never acted in anything. Doesn't mean we're not gonna... I start now. Yeah, like, like you, you, you talk, talk weird, weird like this. this. No, we're, we're not going to do this. this. But he knew he had something special, both in his script and in himself. And, and so, so is the, this, this ultimate underdog story where he told them, okay, fine, you know what? I'll, I'll take less. And, and he ended up selling it for something that was like $100,000 just so he could be in it. it. Well, and, and I got to throw this out there too. I, I can understand why he would want to do it because, I mean, that story is like Rocky himself is a reflection of himself. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like who else would play it? I can't mm-hmm. think of anyone in that time frame who would. And – I mean, I mean, you, you, you watch, watch that, that first movie, movie you know, people, people if, if you, you haven't, haven't seen the first Rocky movie or any of the Rocky movies, movies you're, you're probably thinking, thinking it's like, oh, it's, uh, uh, 
Uh, it's more charges galore and fun, peppy music. And he's gonna he's gonna fight and win the day. And that's that's more of the Rocky sequels. And don't get me wrong, I love the Rocky sequels, except for Rocky Five. That one's terrible. But uh, what's Rocky Five? Uh, it it's the one where. Rocky has brain damage and he fights Tommy Gunn and oh, it's, it's no that's good. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I forgot but about that one. The first, the first Rocky movie is like this slow moving, really emotional, sensitive drama. Like there's a ten minute scene where it's just like him ice skating with the date, and it's really awkward, but they're really sweet. It's a, uh, it's this, it's the perfect ultimate story of. The guy who's given no shots in life, everything in his life is terrible, is awful, but he's never going to stop. He's always going to try and work harder for a better day. He's always going to keep going and work for it. He works hard as he can, wait for a shot. Because everyone is going to get a shot in life at some point. And when it comes, you better be as ready as Rocky Balboa was, because dang it, he was ready. He trained, and yes, there is a montage in the movie, and it's one of the great montages of all time. He trains, he puts in his heart, his soul, everything into it. And spoilers, you know, this uh, this big boxing match against like the, the nation's champion, the heavyweight champion of the world against some random Joe off the streets who's given a shot. He doesn't win at the end. But dang it, he went every single round. He proved his worth. He has the medal. He is made of what it takes. And uh, yeah, it's it's an inspiring movie. It's a special movie. It's the most American movie I can think of the idea that anyone can make it. So long as you put in the work, you do it, you fight for yourself. And uh, yeah, it's, it's something else. Yeah. And that movie kind of set, I don't, I don't think Sylvester Stallone realized what it would do, but it kind of set no. the pace for a lot of other movies like montage. That's not a bad idea actually. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Or montage in there. Um, and also uh, the fighter that he fought, Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed. Thank you. I was like, it's Creed. What's his first name? It's an astronaut. No. Yeah. It's a spaceship. No. What is it? <laughs> yeah. Apollo Creed. The reason why they got him to do it is because, he, yeah, he's some big shot. And they're like, hey, why don't you do a promotional stunt and fight this uh, this Joe off the street? Yeah. You're fighting the American man because, you know, came out in 1976 is for the, the bicentennial of America. The whole thing is about, you know, anyone can make it. Anyone can be in the big leagues. Quick, we need to find someone who can be in the big leagues. And who's the you know the the random guy, the the good old Joe Schmo, the American guy off the street who can do it? Rocky can. Mm -hmm. And so can you. And yeah, so it's it, it's like you don't need to be big to go big. Yeah. You can you start small and work your way up, which is why Rocky is such an iconic thing. And mm -hmm. it, that's like the baseline of any like good hero is they start off at the bottom and then work their way up. Yeah. I mean, that's why the, the ending is so triumphant, because it doesn't matter if he won. He got all the way up to the top and ends with him screaming, Adrian! Because he's calling out to the woman he loves. Is like, hey, look, I did this. I shouldn't have been able to do this, but I did. I, I can't believe this. I couldn't have done it without you. I, I love you so much. I'm so proud of you and all this stuff. It's oh, it, it's perfect. I, I love that movie. So the goal... If I remember correctly, his goal was to try and stay up, stay up mm -hmm. for all three rounds, right? It, or not no, all three well, rounds. Uh, pit, stay up out of all the not, not get knocked down or yeah, I think it's all twelve rounds. It's not to not get you know to to last the whole time to not get knocked out, and uh, yeah, he he did. In fact, you know the uh, you know Apollo, he's you know he's big, he's ostentatious, he's. He's braggadocious. Look at all these words I know. He's he's got this, you know, Jed, this swagger. I got small he, brain. You smaller words, please. He's got this swagger, this charisma, this energy when he walks into the ring. The spotlight's on him. This is his day. He gets knocked down the very first round. First time in his whole career that anyone has knocked him down. And who did it? Rocky did it. Because Rocky took his shot. He was ready. He was prepared. He gave it all he got, and he did it. I, I got to throw another movie out there because I – I personally really love these kind of movies. Yeah. But like, there's a lot of them out there and I, I feel like they were inspired by Rocky, except the one I'm about to mention, which is actually based off of a true story, uh, Cinderella Man. Great, Great movie. movie. Cinderella Man's a good one. And mm -hmm. Warrior. Yeah. I, I, I personally enjoy that movie. But like, they all kind of have that same basis off of Rocky where it's like, it's a nobody. Yeah. 
who is about to make a comeback. Or like in Cinderella Man, he wasn't a nobody. He was a well-known boxer at, for a time. Then he got back but, into it. Yeah, yeah a, guy a guy who, who uh, was, was past, past his prime, prime you know, like, like you know, a bit harsh to say it, but he was a bit of a, a failure. You know, he, he was washed up. He was not who he used to be. It was during the Great Depression, so he was yeah. in the work lines. Yeah. 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 Not this grand boxer that he used to be. Mm -hmm. And then you got in Warrior, where it's the two brothers who were nobodies. Mm -hmm. One was just a, uh, uh, not a professor. He was a teacher. Yeah. Physics teacher. High, High school, school teacher, teacher, right? Yeah. He, he was as a science teacher. Uh, I think specifically physics. Anyway, yeah. details. But he was a teacher, but his house was going under, so he needed to get money. And then he's got his brother who who lost, who was a deserter for the Marines because of friendly fire. Yeah. And he promised his uh, battle buddy that he would come home and then help take care of his family that he left behind. Mm -hmm. So you got these two brothers just coming in this giant, huge martial arts uh, competition. Yeah. For, uh, and they're like nobodies against all these giant, like well-known fighters. Mm -hmm. Same thing as Rocky. Coming in out of nowhere, becomes the underdog. Everyone roots for him. Yeah. And I gotta say, the ending for Warrior, oh, oh, that, really yeah. good, really good, really liked it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that that's kind of why. I mean, I appreciate Rocky a lot too. My, it's a good way to get amped up for any sport. I mean, yeah. I mean, as much as I talk about it being like, no, this is a serious movie. It's an art. It's drama. I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say that Bill Conti theme doesn't really get your blood pumping. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run, you know, ten miles. I'm gonna run up those steps. I'm gonna start slapping a bunch of dead cows, all this stuff, because I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing music. Yeah. Uh, also, I, uh, that's kind of what got Eye of the Tiger out there. Yeah. It's written for uh, for uh, Rocky Three. Yeah, man, I got that freaking rocket, like a, dude. I'm looking know, at his pictures right now. It, it was, was uh, dude was so it, ripped and roided out of his mind. Are, are you, you looking, looking at Rocky three? Uh, yeah, uh, Rocky two thousand six. Yeah, that's Rocky. Oh, oh uh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, he, he was, was in great shape in Rocky two thousand six because he was like fifty nine or something like that. that. But he was still incredible. But no, for Rocky three, he literally dropped down to two point five percent body fat. It's, it's holy crap. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's unspeakable. unspeakable. It's unimaginable. But he did it because that's how dedicated he is. He was like, I don't care. I can do anything. I know I can because look where I came from. Look where I am now. If I can do that, anyone can do that. Which, I mean, I love uh, just how actors, like especially if they made the movie, yeah, they are dedicated to it because it's like, this is my baby. I want to take care of yeah. it and make it look good. And that's other dedication. Than I hate yeah. working out. Because, I mean, because Rocky, Rocky, or Sylvester Stallone, he, I think he wrote all of the Rocky movies, movies and, he's and he's directed all of them but the first one. one. And, and he, uh, it, it's, it's his, his baby, baby, and he, uh, you know, he's, he's very, very protective, protective of it, but at the same time, time he, he knows he has, he has to, he has to go the extra mile with it, because it's not necessarily like, you know, I have to do it for my reputation or something. Rocky's bigger than him. Rocky means a lot to a lot of people, and he has to do it for for Rocky's sake, for all our sakes. And I gotta throw us out there since you said that uh, the director, or was it the producer of Creed? Yeah, yeah of uh, in the behind uh, the scenes for what's his name? Uh, Ryan Coogler. Yeah, he, he mentioned how it's like that's what his dad showed him right before sports was Rocky. Yeah, or when he played like football and stuff, and it'd get him all pumped up. That's the kind of effect that uh, Sylvester Stallone's character brought up is brought this guy who's who was inspired yeah. by it and he's like well what, what about the next legacy i want to i want to know more so he talked to sylvester and said hey what about creed apollo creed's son and stuff i haven't actually seen those movies not gonna lie oh you, you got, got to. to i it was it's on my list of everything i need to watch oh, but, but and then i get distracted and i watch something else I'm like hey this looks interesting let's watch that yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh from what the clips i have seen it's like well done yeah. yeah well done i personally am not one of those people who clap in movie theaters but <laughs> i don't know there, there was a i saw i didn't see creed opening night i was on my mission but i saw creed 2 opening night and uh 
there were a number of times where the audience was cheering and clapping and hollering. I mean, it's a fighting movie. It's, I'm, it's, like, like, yeah, there, there were definitely moments, moments like, like, man, they, you know, know that, that punch, punch really connected. connected. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. But there was also like, like you know, there's, there's a moment, moment in the first Rocky movie, movie where I wish I could have been in theaters opening night, night where, you know, the whole movie, movie you know, keep, keep in mind, this has been off of one of the all time great franchises with one of the all time great film scores. They never played the Rocky theme until one moment in the very last fight where he's finally getting up. And he, like, he's proven to himself and in front of the world that he lives up to the legacy of his father. But he's more than just his father's son. He is just as good in his own right. And the Rocky theme is playing as he gets up. And he's, like, he's bruised. He's bloody. He's swollen. But he's got his fists up. And he's going to make it count. All right. That's it. Yeah. Go, like, the, there's a fight in the movie. It's all done in one take. An entire three-minute boxing match. But they, they still were able to do, like, makeup in between the take, you know, in the one take as the camera will, like, swivel over here. They're doing makeup and stuff over here. So as it is, you know, like, the camera is going in circles for the whole fight around the two fighters. And so in this one shot, this one scene that's one shot, you'll see, like, the bruises and the swollen eyes and all that stuff going through. It's incredible. All right. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> you better. I haven't watched it because I've been busy, but oh man, I'll have to watch it while I'm doing some animation and stuff. Yeah, yeah the, the two Creed, Creed movies definitely, definitely live up to the legacy, legacy of Rocky. Rocky. So I'm reading, the, I'm reading the one in the chat. Uh, the Creed movies do a pretty good job. The boxing scenes are great. I usually don't get on board with spin offs or sequels, but it didn't feel like they were milking the franchise, just solid movies. Yeah, I, I uh, what, what would you say to that, Jed? Do you, you agree? I, I agree 100% because when, you know, when Ryan Coogler went to Sylvester Stallone initially, his first thought was, no, there's no, like, okay, we, we already did the last Rocky movie. We don't, we're not going to milk that cow because this is special. We can't just do another one for, like, more money. But then as he listened to him talk about it, he knew this isn't for money. This means a lot to him, too. And he has, a, he has an idea that I want to tell something new and do something with it that you can only do as a spinoff of Rocky, not as something original. And so he said, okay, kid, let's do it. And, oh gosh. It, I mean, he was nominated, Sylvester Stallone was nominated for Best Supporting Actor for his, his return as Rocky in, uh, in Creed. It's a really emotional movie. And then the sequel, I mean, this is the rematch of the century. It's Creed versus Drago. If he dies, he dies. Oh, that line makes me laugh. Not gonna lie, they they made they it was a surprisingly emotional movie. And oh my gosh, the guy who played uh, the young Drago is I don't I can't remember his last name. It's like Florian Montescu or something like that. That man is an animal. Yeah, I'll, I'll he, look it up. If you see him, look at those pictures of him. That is him slimmed down. Michael B. Jordan put on like 20, 30 pounds of muscle for the movie. And this dude lost like 40 pounds of muscle. Holy and he was, crap. And he was still way bigger. But they're like, okay, we have to make this look at least somewhat feasible. What the heck? Is this, yeah, he, was this guy put it through the same machines as Drago was in the... Right? This man is inhuman. And he's, he's continued to act, which I'm glad for. You know, he was... He was in Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. And, you know, even though he was just playing a henchman, he was a lot of fun. Wait, how can, he had to lose weight. How big was he before then? Yeah. Yeah. There are, there are like, you know, much like Rocky IV, there is a number of, uh, of workout um, montages in the movie where it'll show, you know, instead of showing Rocky and then Drago, it shows Creed and then Drago, you know, kind of that mirroring and... There were sequences in it where I'm watching, like, there's no way he actually did that. Like, are we sure that wasn't just, like, CGI or something like that? Because not only is he inhumanly large, he was doing, like, impossible workouts. It was insane. That's not true. It's impossible. <laughs> <sighs> I, why is this drop down menu? I'm trying to figure out what his name was. Or is. Hey, if, was... you, if, you, if you figure out a way to pronounce it, I'm mean, props to you, man. This, uh, oh, here, I'll, I'll see, see if I can, I can find, find it. 
You know, wait, what? I'm, I'm an idiot. I just destroyed two of his cat. Uh, uh, let's see if I can be Jed. Uh, cast. All right, his, his name, name is Florian Muntano. Muntano? I, I don't know. Uh, I, I can't say it, but Mutano. yeah, the dude, dude is big. I think it's Muntano. I don't know. But yeah, those are, uh, yeah. That's, that's that's Rocky. That's the Rocky franchise. That's the Creed movies. Seriously, people, if you haven't seen these movies, some of the Rocky movies do get a little cheesy and over the top, but you know, in a fun way. They're very fun. And uh, but yeah, that first Rocky movie, that's something special. I'm always going to be grateful for it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So yeah, those are. Uh, we'll kind of start to wrap things up here. We've been going for about an hour and twenty minutes, but you know, kind of. Yeah, is uh, this is gonna be a longer episode? We'll just close out by saying, you know, these movies—they're uh, they're really special to us. They brought something to our lives that, you know, we're thankful we're thankful they have. Whether it's the return of the amazingness that's Keanu Reeves, or maybe it's you know something more personal, like you know, giving Robert his love of history of, or of adventure, all these different things. So, uh, so yeah, movies—they're you know they can be amazing entertainment. They can be incredible art but they're powerful they they leave an impact on us they can change us so uh you know you know we're uh, we're not going to be doing an episode next week spoilers because you know it's thanksgiving a week from now so we you know spend time with families and all that but uh you know we want to take a week this week to kind of talk about some of the movies that have helped us and that we're thankful for uh, anything you want to add to that robert uh all right. Well, then in that case, we'll, uh, I guess we'll start signing off. We'll, uh, you know, go ahead and like and share this video. You know, the only way that we're able to grow our, uh, our channel and our podcast is by you. You guys are the, the greatest advertisements that we could ask for. So if you have friends or family or people you think that would like us, share us, tell us about it, share us on your social media and, you know, we're always going to be grateful for you. So please, I mean, we give you out, you know, an hour, hour and a half each week. At least you can do. Please, please. And uh, <laughs> so yeah, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And go ahead and in the comments, go down, drop down, tell us what movies you're grateful for. And, you know, if you like your comments, we'll shout you out in the next episode. Yeah. And also you can follow us on Twitter, at of cinematics and Instagram, the world of cinematics. Mm-hmm. And you'll be able to get news from us when we go live, if we're not going live, stuff like that. And also, you'll get to see some uh, of our own little shout outs to other yeah. other podcasts, other channels, other mm-hmm. Twitter little, uh, animations we're working, we're working on, on or mm-hmm. pithy, pithy witticisms, witticisms and comebacks, comebacks on, on Twitter. Twitter. Which, uh, for our audio listeners, on YouTube, we go live every Thursday with the exception of holidays. And yes, not next week. We also have a bunch of other videos that we have posted as well mm-hmm. and uh we, we got some more projects we got some christmas shorts coming out for uh the animation of pretzels which is uh aaron's uh little comic webtoons comic series uh, mm-hmm. cartoon and yeah go check it out he's also got a, a book a compilation that he's been uh working on so look forward to that in the future mm-hmm. but uh, stay tuned we'll see you mm-hmm. uh, after thanksgiving all right, so everyone, just remember to be grateful, you know, spend time with loved ones and, uh, you know, reflect on all the amazing things you have in your life, whether it's a movie that meant a lot to you or, you know, people that hopefully mean even more. I'm thankful for Bang. Please sponsor me. <laughs> yes, please sponsor us. I had to get it in there. All right. Bye. All right. Signing off. See you next